It's a fairly common occurrence for linear transformations to actually map a vector space into itself. So suppose we got a vector space like that, and we got a basis for that vector space, and we're going to use the same basis for both instances. We don't necessarily have to, but in this case we are. And we're going to create a matrix just like we've been discussing in the last couple of videos. Now, in this case, both bases are the same, but it's still the same basic idea. Multiplication times the coordinate vector with respect to that basis gives me the coordinate vector of the transformed vector with respect to that same basis. When we do that, we're going to say that M, the matrix that does this, is called the beta matrix, or B matrix, for the linear transformation. And we're going to denote it by putting the transformation name in brackets sub the beta, just sort of like we've done with the coordinate vectors. But now we're talking about the transformation matrix with respect to that. When we do that, there's a tie between linear transformations in this diagonalization that we've been discussing. So suppose A is a diagonalizable matrix. We've got a matrix P that diagonalize it. And then we've got a basis, but that basis is formed from the columns of P. Now, if we think about it, always the columns of P have to form a basis of some kind because we know the columns have to be linearly independent for it to be an invertible matrix, and because there's n columns, n linearly independent vectors, for have to form a basis for Rn. Then, what this says is that that diagonal matrix that it's similar to is the beta matrix, is the matrix for that linear transformation with respect to that basis for the transformation, which is multiplying by A. Let's think about this. So we've got a matrix, a vector X, and if we multiply on the left by A, we get AX. Easy. But now, we can also think about this, since A is PDP inverse, I can think about this as sort of doing three multiplications to get there. We're multiplying by P inverse. Then we multiply by D. Then we multiply by P. Well, let's think about this. Let's remember when you've got a matrix and you've got the columns are your basis vectors, multiplying that matrix P times the coordinate vector for X with respect to the basis equals the X vector. Okay, well that means though, if I take this and multiply both sides by P inverse, that means that the X vector, the coordinates for it, are P inverse times X. So hold on, this is saying that going from here to here, this is creating the coordinate vector for X. with respect to our basis. Similarly, over here, we're uncoordinatizing this, changing it back to the original vector space. So the basic idea then, this thing here, this multiplication by D, is taking the coordinate vector for X to the coordinate vector for AX with respect to the basis, which is exactly what this is saying. 
D is the beta matrix. D is the matrix that takes my coordinate vector to my coordinate vector of the transformed thing. That's all this theorem is saying.